What is going on everyone? Welcome to the channel. My name is Jacob Scott. Thank you so much for stopping by. It's time for a new series that I'm going to be doing called Fantastic Effects Fridays. So with all that being said, as you can probably assume, it's going to come on Fridays and we're going to be talking about Fantastic Effects. We might need to change the name of this, but as of right now, that's what it's called. So if you want to in the future, look for it, type that in, because as far as I know, that's what it's going to be called forever. For ever and before we get any farther i just want to get something on my chest off my chest not on my chest get something off my chest this cup over here is it in frame yeah this one right this mug it says coffee it has tea in it so in case you're wondering so what are we going to be teaching in this fantastic effects fridays well it's going to teach you uh how to shoot a gun How to uh, blow up stuff for absolutely no reason. All right, so without any further ado, let's jump right into this muzzle flash tutorial. Let's go. All right, so as you can see, I'm in here in After Effects. Let me show you all the stuff that I got. First, I got my main footage here. Second thing you're gonna need, of course, is your muzzle flash. This is just a JPEG, so it's just a photo. Next thing you're gonna need is a smoke asset. And the last thing, if you wanna get really fancy, is some gun shells. Now, these gun shells that I got off of actionvfx.com, they have some extremely good uh, paid stock footage and some extremely good free stock footage. So I'll leave a link to that site down below. And honestly, it's some of the best stock footage that I have ever seen. So let's jump right into this. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have our muzzle flash layer here, and we're gonna drop it in right on top. You'll notice that it has this black background. I'm just gonna right click on our layer here, blending mode, turn this to screen. Now, if I wanted to, I could use also add, or oh, that was lighting, my bad. Now, if I wanted to, I could also use add, but I find that it blows it out and I don't really care for the way it looks. So in this case, I'm going to be using screen. So now here, I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the first layer where I'd really be shooting. So we don't need the rest of this. So the first layer that I'm going to be shooting with our muzzle flash, I'm going to hit the drop down menu hit the position over here we're going to turn on keyframes so what keyframes is going to do it's just going to tell it tell this layer to move every frame that i move it so as you can see i move it it moves where i want it to go so what we're going to do is just track this layer forward and move it to every frame just have it positioned over the barrel and this is a fairly quick process you could also try and track this layer but seeing that it's moving a decent amount um, it really struggled to hold on and have a good track. So I find this is the best way for me. Um, it is a little bit time consuming, but it tends to go pretty quick once you get the hang of it. All right, so as you can see, I've tracked this forward every single frame with keyframes. And of course, a muzzle flash would not constantly be lit. So what we're gonna do with the muzzle flash here is the first time it would shoot, which would be right there. We're going to turn keyframes on for opacity, turn it to 100, next frame, turn it to zero, so on and so on. So normally I'll have it on zero either one frame or two frames, but I'm really never going to have it on zero three frames. So like this frame here, I'm going to turn it down to zero and the next frame I'm going to also have it to zero. Then I'm going to turn it back up to 100%, zero, 100%. So like I said... I'm pretty much never going to go three frames where there's not going to be a muzzle flash. But I feel like this one it can be zero, this one can be zero, and then 100. And again, we're just going to continue to do this until all the footage is finished. All right, so now that you have that done, this is what it's going to look like. As you can see, it's flash in here. And I feel like there's one frame right there definitely needs to be moved up a little bit so as you can see it's already starting to look a little bit like a muzzle flash but there's definitely a lot more we can do to improve this now one way I like to improve my effects is consider how your effects may uh, you know affect the environment around you so when I'm shooting this gun what may happen it may illuminate my body some so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna right click here 
First, we're gonna need to track me. So we're gonna create a null object and I'm just gonna drop this to the bottom so it's out of the way. Now, starting from the frame that the gun first shoots, I'm gonna have my normal footage here selected. Go to animation and track motion. Now, this does not be, need to be a perfect track because when we do light up my body, with the mask that we use, we're going to feather it a whole lot, so it does not need to be a perfect track. So we're going to track forward, but you do want the track to be as best as possible. So we're going to let this thing do its course, and while you're waiting, feel free to go... I don't know. Yeah, I don't really know. Never mind, I forget what I just said. Alright, so now that you can see this is tracked all the way forward, it actually did a pretty good track. We're gonna, before we hit apply, we're gonna hit edit target. And remember that null layer we did? We're gonna take, what we're doing here is we're gonna pretty much take all these tracking properties and put them in the null layer. So once I hit okay, we're gonna hit apply. And we're gonna hit okay again. So now what you'll see is if I click on this null layer, you can see that the null layer has the exact same properties as the track. So next what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna lighten up my body. So what I'm gonna do is right click again, we're gonna make an adjustment layer. Now this adjustment layer is just gonna sit right above this right here, our main footage. Now what we're gonna do for the adjustment layers, we're gonna hit the effects over here, we're gonna grab our curves effect, drop it onto this adjustment layer, and brighten it up. So right now it's brightening up the whole scene, but we only want it to brighten up my body. So what we're gonna do is with the adjustment layer selected, we're gonna make a mask here, now, I don't normally take the mask all the way to the edge because we're gonna feather so this mask quite a bit, so it is gonna go out to the edge. And close up the mask. So now, as you can see, if I toggle this on and off, it still has these hard lines. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit our adjustment layer hit the mask drop down menu hit that again and we're gonna go in here to feather so what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna feather this and depending on your scene you may have to feather it more than me or less but for me I found that 30 probably looks the best now what we're gonna do of course this has to brighten up and you know dim back down every time the gun shoots instead of turning the opacity up and back down up and back down we already did all the work so what we're gonna do is the opacity layer for our muzzle flash we're just going to copy all these keyframes so once i have those selected i'm going to hit Control c and with our adjustment layer go down here and just hit Control v so it's actually doing it opposite of the time so let me just go back and move forward one frame and then hit Control v all right so now it's doing on the right thing now last what we're going to need to do is we're of course going to need to have the layer move uh, when I move. So what we're going to do is that null layer we made down here, we're just going to grab this little lasso right here for adjustment layer and drag it and parent it to the null layer. So now you can see that this mask moves whenever I move. So this is what it looks like now. I definitely find that that helps even though it's very subtle definitely helps to just you know step up your footage and make it look a lot better make it look like that muzzle flash is really supposed to be there now the next thing we're gonna do now that that's done I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna grab my smoke asset now as soon as I drop this in you're gonna see it's black again again I'm gonna go into blending mode and I'm gonna grab the screen blending mode now this is only needs to start at the first gunshot and I want there to be a decent amount of smoke already, so we're going to bring it to about there. All right, so what we're going to do here is first we're going to sort of drag it over the area that I want it, about there. And we're going to create a mask, because as you can see with the smoke layer, there's this hard line down here. We definitely don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a mask here. It's all the way around the smoke layer. And then again, we are going to feather this. All right, so with one smoke layer, I find that I can cover about 10 to 15 gunshots. So what I'm just gonna do 
So with this first gunshot, gonna turn on mask opacity and turn it all the way down to 0%. Move ahead about uh, 15 frames or so, and we're just gonna turn this up to 50%. So as you can see, it looks like as I'm shooting more and more and more smoke is coming out. And I notice we need to adjust this mask just a little bit and bring it up some. And what we're gonna do is we're also gonna move this layer over just a little bit. So this is what it looks like now. So as you can see, seeing the opacity of it goes up, it's almost like there's more and more smoke coming out as I'm shooting. And again, you may need to try, you know, it almost seems like 50% is still a little bit much, so we're going to turn this down to 40%. That looks pretty good to me. Even that's a little much. We're going to bring it down to 30%. So with doing effects like this too, it's just a matter of you're probably not going to make it perfect the first time, so you're just going to have to mess with it. I find that that looks a lot better. There we go. Yep, that's right. So for me, like it, for me, I only have the mask opacity to go up to 30%. So I'm not going to bring it all the way back to 100%. I'm going to keep it very subtle. All right. So right now that would already be a pretty solid muzzle flash already. But if you want to take it a step farther, what we can do is we can add in some gun shells. So what we're going to do is just add, grab our gun shell, you know, stock footage up here. One thing that I do like about the action VFX uh, footage it's already keyed so I don't have to worry about adding a blending mode or anything like that um, I'm not positive if all of it's keyed but as far as I know what I've used it seems to already be keyed out so first thing I'm gonna do is scale this to size now starting with the uh, time where we first shoot I'm gonna place it right over where pretty much the chamber of the gun would let the shell out and I'm gonna turn on position keyframes. So what I'm gonna do now is move forward about seven to eight frames, and we're gonna move it down here. And this is probably the most fiddly thing, the thing that you're gonna have to figure out the, um, you know, mess with the most to get it looking right. But of course it wouldn't just go in a straight line, it would sort of go out, it would curve a little bit. So we're just gonna bring this up here. Let's see how this looks. So overall, it looks pretty decent, but we want this we want this to fall behind this uh, this big metal thing here. So what we're gonna do is with our main layer down here, our main footage, we're just gonna duplicate this, and we're gonna bring it all the way to the top. Oh, one more. There we go. So all we're gonna do now is just mask out whatever object we're gonna have it fall behind. In this case. It is this right here. So now, as you can see, that's masked out. So our gun shell is going to fall right behind it. Now, the gun shell still looks pretty unnatural because one, we wouldn't be able to see it there. So what we're going to do for this is we're going to go into our shell, turn on the opacity keyframe, turn it all the way to zero, and then the, the frame after the gunshot have it at 100%. Next thing we're going to do, of course, it wouldn't be perfectly sharp. It would definitely have some motion blur. So we're going to turn on motion blur up here. It's already enabled and turn on motion blur for this layer. And overall, that's pretty much finished right there. Again, this would just be a matter of duplicating that over and over again and messing with it until it looks perfect or as close to perfect as you can get it. See like that there to me is moving just a little bit fast and it's just a matter of tweaking it over and over again. One thing too. Uh, just if you want to, you know, be picky about it, this muzzle flash to me seems a little bit sharp. So if I wanted to, I can just grab a blur setting uh, effect over here and drop on a blur effect for the muzzle flash and just bring that up just a little bit. And two, one thing to make sure to do, like with the gun shells and the smoke, always make sure to have it graded to your footage. So to me, that gun shell seems a little bit dark. I brighten that up. And this smoke here, if you really look at it, it sort of has a reddish tint, so I just kind of pull that out. But overall, that's pretty much how I do all my muzzle flashes, and this is what the end result would look like, as you already saw in the video. So that is it for this video. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to hit that like button, and if you want to see more of Fantastic Effects Fridays, feel free to hit that subscribe button, and be sure to hit that notification bell. 
down below. If you have any other tutorial ideas that you'd like to see for Fantastic Effects Fridays, also comment in the comments below. Let me know because I'm going to need as many ideas as possible to keep this video series going as long as possible. We also do filming videos here, photography videos, so feel free and be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. But until next time, I'll see you later.